What's up guys? I'm a huge Tony Hawk fan. I've been with this series from the very first game. I know it's a popular thing online for people to rank the Tony Hawk games, but I've never seen anyone try to go after every single game. I'm talking about all 18 games released in the series. The series that changed the generation. It revolutionized gaming and influenced pop culture. But it also had some serious misfires in its 16 year run. Today I'm going to rank every single title in the series and briefly assess each one. I'm more of a gamer than a skater, so I'm going to be looking at these more from a gamer rather than its representation of the sport, where I know there's some disagreement. That's the thing about Tony Hawk. It's where two worlds collide, the skaters and the players. We may not agree on everything, but we can all agree the Tony Hawk games were awesome. Alright, first game, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5. Garbage. Let's move on. Okay, okay. In all honesty, I don't really want to go into this game too much because we all know this game sucks, but I will say despite the fact this game lacks an incredible amount of content and features that even the PlayStation 1 and N64 games had, I think if it at least had some decent level design, it could have been saved. The Tony Hawk games are filled with hundreds and hundreds of details and combo lines in every level. Here Robomoto throws together a handful of empty lifeless boxes for us to skate inside with maybe one or two decent combos. Plus the whole way of executing challenges is broken, confronting you with loading screen after loading screen. You know what was great about the classic games? You only had to load an environment once and then you could play inside of it as much as you wanted without pause. That was groundbreaking stuff back then, and it's just mind-blowing to see how much of that Robomoto reversed in this current-gen title. Tony Hawk's Motion This game came with a peripheral that gave your DS motion controls like the accelerometer and your cell phone. The accessory works pretty decently, but the game Tony Hawk Motion plays more like a 10-minute tech demo than something you would actually spend money on. It's remarkable they even sold this thing, there's absolutely no way to advance or progress. There's only 20 challenges to complete across 5 levels. What happens when you complete the challenges? Nothing. That's it. That's all the game has to offer. There's a painting mini game. What else would you expect of a Tony Hawk title? That and opening up with a snowboarding segment. I mean, what's going on here? Tony Hawk Ride and Tony Hawk Shred. I'm going to be really quick on these games because I don't think there's a lot of interest to be honest. I'll be frank, Ride was garbage. If not more garbage than Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5. But Ride doesn't provoke the level of emotion that Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5 does. Moving on though, before I go on another rant about Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5, Ride and Shred were the Tony Hawk games that promoted and supported the skateboarding peripheral, and it was just so pointless. It didn't feel anything like a skateboard. All you could do was lean on the thing, and you could barely control what was essentially an endless runner on wheels. Shred was only slightly better than Ride because it had slightly more content with snowboarding, but these two games share the same problems that all the Robomoto games had. No content. Robomoto Moto clearly likes to make single session gaming experiences with no incentives to come back again and again. Considering the Tony Hawk series is a series known for rich content and endless replayability, I don't understand how Robomoto ever thought releasing any of these games in as slim as a state as they did would ever have worked. But I guess Activision is to blame, they probably were rushed by the publisher in most cases. Tony Hawk's Downhill Jam I had this game and I think I only played it like one time. I actually like the concept. Tony Hawk's favorite level was downhill in the first Tony Hawk game, and he wanted to do a game like that, but most Tony Hawk fans probably already know, this game's design was what Neversoft was originally planning to do with Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1, but they figured out that the street skating aspect was far more interesting, and that's ultimately how this feels too, except it's even blander than it probably could have been. You just don't have any of the attributes of the main games that could have changed this genre up, so it ends up feeling particularly tame compared to most downhill racers like SSX and Downhill. Downhill Domination. Pass. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater HD. There was more people into this game when it first came out than I was, but this is the start of the wonky Robomoto physics that made its way into Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5. Not gonna talk about it anymore. I think these are better redesigns of classic levels than when Neversoft redesigned them themselves for the secret levels, but I would just suggest replaying the older titles instead. The feel is just too off to really experience these levels the way that they originally intended. Tony Hawk's Proving Ground Honestly a well designed game. It's a similar theme to a lot of these games where it's derivative of a better title. It's more the same with Tony Hawk Project 8. The thing that really puts this game low on this list though is you could feel never stop losing their interest in the series. This game just doesn't have the energy. I like the sprawling, larger environment, but it just felt a little too strung out and large compared to its predecessor. Tony Hawk's American Wasteland. 
This game really hammers the nail on the coffin in the dark ages of the Neversoft era. You could feel the series start to wean and feel like a little bit of a cash out in a couple titles before this. This one really sent the idea home that Neversoft needed to implement some serious innovation fast, especially with the rising competition of Skate at this point. Fortunately, they did just that later on. But back to American Wasteland, I actually really enjoyed this feature where you can collect skate pieces across the world to create the great skate park at the end. However, this was still the first Tony Hawk that I actually felt fairly disappointed with. It was just too redundant of the titles before at this point. I'm also going to include with this one American Skateland, which is a DS remake, which is surprisingly good for a DS game. It's not the best Tony Hawk mobile title though. It feels exactly how you would want Tony Hawk to feel on the DS, but it doesn't ever exceed expectations. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. This is the one that started it all. The only problem with this one is how antiquated it feels. The physics are honestly a little laughable at this point. I like how it looks when they spin around, it's just so unnatural. Honestly, it's probably the simplest Tony Hawk game, and simplicity is the ultimate sophistication according to Da Vinci, so this would probably be Da Vinci's favorite title. Tony Hawk's Underground 2. This is indeed where the series first started to falter. As a continuation of the game before it, it's great, but as a series landmark, this is where the series most felt like a cash grab. The most unfortunate thing, Neversoft crafted a fairly engaging story with the title before this one, but they scratched that for a jackass theme adventure with Bam Majira as the focus, who overshadows Tony Hawk and any of the other skaters. This is presumably because of his fame with MTV at the time, which made him fairly marketable. Gameplay wise is pretty solid and arguably the most comprehensive title in terms of tricks and mechanics. There's just a lot of silliness here, which Neversoft recently revealed that this was more the pushing of Activision than it was their own doing. I'm also going to give a shout to the PSP version in this instance as it's one of the best PSP games period. I love this game on the PSP and it's probably the only PSP game I ever played in such a capacity besides Daxter, which was a great game. But for mobile Tony Hawk on the go at this level of performance is gold. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4. I credit this title with really pushing the combo line systems to go really long and wild. You could technically do this in the other games, but it was a little more of a novelty than an essential mechanic. Missions like Escape from Alcatraz really push the player to the height of that incredible combo system Neversoft had been perfecting. Additionally, this was the first game to cut the 2 minute time clock, which was a huge innovation for the series. This meant it was the first game to really encourage exploration as an objective, instead of it just being an extra option in the menus under Free Skate for you to mess around with your friends. Additionally, it's some of the best level design in any of the games. Tony Hawk Project 8. I honestly love this game a ton and I considered pushing it higher on the list. From the stagnant nature of American Wasteland before it and the competition of EA Skate, Neversoft went out of their way to create a Tony Hawk from the ground up that really reminded us why Tony Hawk is the real champion. I personally feel this is the only Tony Hawk game that accomplishes a fully fleshed interconnected environment. It's all one map and you can combo your whole way through it seamlessly. This is the closest blueprint for the future of the series if it were to come back. There's two ideas for a new game that are fairly popular among the fans. One, Rockstar gets a hold of the property, how awesome would that be? And they give it a huge open world environment like Grand Theft Auto. The other really popular idea is getting a team like Neversoft back together and creating a game that interconnects all of the original levels into one environment. But if there's one Tony Hawk that still flaunts the prospect of a properly scaled, fantastically flowing environment, Project 8 is it. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Tony Hawk Pro Skater was a cool game when we were all younger, but when Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 came out, it was everyone's favorite game. And replaying it now, you can still see why. Great level design, weird challenges, a banging soundtrack. This is the Tony Hawk that defined the series, and it's hugely replayable. Maybe the most replayable game of the bunch. This is one of the first games that encouraged you to beat it time and time again as you discover more and more of the rewards and content that it has to offer you as you go. A hugely fun and cohesive title without any obvious flaws, this game defined a gaming era and generation. 2X is the best version of the series. It's essentially a combination of Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 levels and Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 levels with some new levels. So more is obviously better there. I'd like to see who would honestly take issue with that. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 had a level of cleanness and smoothness to it that none of the other Tony Hawks game had. I mean, just look at the Japan level. I think this is because Neversoft was literally at the height of their success, and they knew very well they were working on a technological breakthrough, working on one of the first next-generation console games of this caliber. This did go on to be Neversoft's most successful game of all time, 
And it's because it took the simplicity and replayability of Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 and perfected it. Honestly, probably the most representative game of the series without going too far back where it starts to feel a little dated. Tony Hawk's Underground. This is the best one of the bunch, folks. I mean, for the official series, yeah, this is it. In a recent interview, a few Neversoft employees mentioned that it was their proudest title, but they admitted that it was more of a cult hit than a major success. And I'm one of those cult followers. This game literally expanded and succeeded upon every element of the previous titles. I know it's controversial, but I found the off-the-board mechanic a huge innovation for the series. Let's be real, it was always a little nauseating to get to those hard to reach spots until this was introduced. It's more realistic anyway. You glue your skateboard to your feet? That doesn't make any sense. Really though, the narrative element works here brilliantly. And this is because it's giving everything in narrative context to everything that you're doing without being goofy about it like the other game. The narrative content actually serves what it needs to and that's to provide more engagement rather than having you do everything arbitrarily which for a lot of these games you could argue is very arbitrary, not this one. Additionally, the level design is the best. I can't pull off combos anywhere in any of the other games as fluidly as I can in this game, and that's because they simply map these environments perfectly. And mechanically, besides the games that were built on the same engine later on, this is where the physics were at its smoothest. Smoother than butter. This is the only Tony Hawk game I can still feel the excitement and energy breaming at its every corner. And the game is needlessly detailed with me finding new things in it all the time. I know it's not everyone's first pick, and I know those are mainly the skaters that felt this game messed with the integrity of the skateboarding with its off the board feature, but as a game, it's perfect. Honorable mention goes to Thug Pro, which is really the true winner of this series. It's a fan mod available on both PC and Mac, and it adds every single Tony Hawk level in it. Some of the levels are still missing, they're working on them. But as of this point, it's the most cohesive, complete collection of Tony Hawk content that you can find anywhere. With the idea I shared before of the new Tony Hawk game combining all of the original levels into one, this is the closest that we're going to get. It's an active community of Tony Hawk players still going. I mean, hey, when, you, when you're looking to kill some time, you can load up your favorite level and you're in. As I said before, Tony Hawk Underground 2 is the most comprehensive trick system. That is why they went ahead and went with this engine. So you can really do everything that you ever wanted on all these levels now. And it's fantastic. It really opens the whole world. I encourage you to go download Thug Pro right now. Get in on that community. There's a Tony Hawk Pro Skater documentary that's supposed to come out this year. Tony Hawk himself is still trying to push. I don't think this is the end of the Tony Hawk series yet. It is the end as of right now, and that's why I did this list, but, but fingers crossed, folks. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. I'm going to keep trying to come up with some cool lists and things like this. I'll catch you later.